All right, let's make this ring toy. You'll notice over here, it has a spindle with a rounded base on the bottom. So we can create that using a polygon primitive sphere. Scale that up pretty big. And we'll go to the attribute editor, third tab, and adjust the subdivisions to 24, and height subdivisions, I think we can leave at 20. Now in my front view, I wanna select all the faces except those bottom four rows and delete them. Now I have this lens shape left at the bottom. Let's select those faces and move them up to the ground plane. Going back to our perspective view, let's go to edge mode and double click on this outer ring to select and extrude it with command E. Now the extrude function can be tricky because it doesn't look like I've changed the geometry. But I know that I have extruded it because my manipulator has changed. If I click and drag this arrow, you can see those polygons coming out. I can click and drag this arrow to go perpendicular inward, or click and drag the red arrow to spiral outward. But that's not what I want to do. I just want to move them straight up. So let me hit W to go to my move tool, and just click that vertical arrow to move straight up on the Y axis. Now I have a little edge there. Be careful when you're extruding, because a lot of new users of Maya will forget that they've extruded, or won't notice that they've done it, and they'll create a whole lot of excess geometry that's hidden away, and that can cause problems for them later. So just get to know the extrude function and how it works, and make it a rule to only click extrude once, and then move those edges or polygons into place. If you want to be safe, you can go up to Edit Mesh, Extrude, and click on the rectangle to open the Options box. You'll notice also that there's an offset function here. Right now it's zero, meaning whatever I extrude will remain in the exact same place where I extruded it from. But I can set that up with like 0.2. So now when I hit Apply, it'll extrude that edge again, but it'll move it away a little bit from where it started. This is one way to ensure that you're always going to be able to see when you extrude something and not forget that that extra geometry is there. I'm going to go back to zero and undo that extrusion, close the options box. But I do want to keep extruding, so I'm going to use Command E, and I can click and drag the blue arrow now to pull that ring inward to create a top surface of the base. Let's go into about there. This is going to be the peg next. Let me go extrude again and click and drag the arrow vertically to create the spindle on the inside. While I still have that edge selected, I can extrude again and close off the center there down to a tiny ring. Let's zoom into that, and I can push the collapse button to collapse all of those into a point. Now I have my top cap surface. Another way of closing that hole at the top without extruding is to go to Mesh, Fill Hole. That just creates a single polygon that I might have to subdivide, but for now, it's fine. Now let's go to object mode, and we'll scale this down because it is just really large. That's about the right size. Now back in object mode, I noticed that some of those edges along the rim need to be softened. In my front view, I can go to edge mode and click and drag to select just those edges. Back in perspective view, select normals, soften edge. Now I have a little bit more smooth shading along the edge there. Okay, are we ready to texture this? If you're keeping all these toys in the same scene, you should already have the ring toy texture loaded into your scene because you used it to create the log toy. So let's right click, assign existing material, and we'll select the last material that we created. We're going to have to map this piece by piece. I'm going to go to use flat lighting so I can see everything a little bit better as I'm texturing. Now select my object and let's start at the bottom and texture from the bottom to the top. In the front view, under face mode, I can select the entire base, control select to get rid of some of these vertical sections. So now I just have the top and bottom surface of that base selected. With those selected, I can choose planar mapping to create a projection. And as we know, by default, it'll be projecting from the side. So we can go into the attribute editor on that projection and rotate in the X axis 90 degrees. Now let's open our UV texture editor. And it's stretched, but we can see our UV shells in the shape of basically a wheel. Using R, we'll scale it down to fit in more of a circular shape. Zoom in a little bit, and we'll scale it down to fit on the wooden circle there. We want to make sure that all of our UVs are inside that space just a little bit. Now let's look in the perspective view, and you can see that we've got that circular wood texture on the top and bottom of the base. So far, so good. Now let's go back to our front view, and in face mode, we'll click and drag to select just that outer rim of the base. And back to perspective view, we'll try a cylindrical mapping function, open our UV texture editor window, and you can see that shell. Let's select that and scale it down. I just need to use a little strip of this wood texture, about that high. But the part of the texture that's wood is too narrow, so I'm going to need to fold this a couple of times maybe. Select half of those UVs right to the center, and click this button to flip the selected UVs horizontally in the U direction. Then we'll move them over, only click that once. Now we'll select half of them again, and click this once, check to see what happened, and click to move them over into position. Now that they've been folded twice, I can select all of those and move them back here to the wood texture. And I can actually scale them up at this point a little bit. 
and move them into position. So now I have some of that wood grain texture on the outer edge of the base. Next up is the spindle. Let's go back to face mode and select all of those faces on the spindle except for the cap and cylindrical mapping. Back to our UV texture editor window. We'll see that similar layout. Scale it down, move it over. And again, it's not going to fit very well. So we may have to scale it a couple of different ways vertically. And I think we're going to have to fold this at least once. I actually think folding it once might be enough. Let's move it back over here into position, scale it down horizontally and scale it up vertically. Close that window and take a look at what we did here. Looks pretty good. Last of all is this cap. Let's select that face or faces on the cap and let's do automatic mapping and we can see that circle. Let's just scale it down and move it up here to the place it's intended for it, right on top of that wood grain cap. Close that window and check it out in our object mode. Looks pretty good.